talk about the uniqueness of this name Islam compared to what the other w religions are named after. Well, the other religions tend to be named after people, mm -hmm. you know, the Jews, or they may be named after a particular person, Buddhists, Buddhism from Buddha. Yeah. Or they're named after a place, Hinduism from the Indus Valley. You know, they're connected to peoples, persons, places. Whereas Islam means submission to the will of God. The name of the religion is the central pillar, the basic concept the essence of the religion. That's what it refers to. Muslim is not the name of a person. It's the name of one who does Islam. Right? It is the, what they call the present participle. You know, one who does that act of Islam or submission is called a Muslim. So the name of the religion is found in the text, in the holy text. Right? You cannot find Hinduism in the Hindu texts. You cannot find Buddhism in the Buddhist text. You not, cannot find Christianity in the Christian text. It's mm -hmm. not there. But the, Jesus called his followers Christians. No, this was Paul. He's the one who invented that name. So is it safe to say that Jesus, peace be upon him, if he was alive today, did he ever hear this word Christian? If Moses was alive today, did he ever hear this term to be, would he be labeled a Jew? Or would he be labeled a Christian? Or would he be labeled a Muslim? All of the prophets would have been labeled Muslims because this essential message was the same message, submission to the will of God. Beginning with Adam, what was the command that he was given? The command he was given was to submit to the will of God. Don't eat from that tree. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's the essence of all that. You know? That was the essence of the religion. You can eat from all of the other trees, quite similar to the one, but this one here, don't eat from it. Mm -hmm. Submission. Will you submit or not? And that's Islam. That is Islam. So yeah. that's why we say that Islam is the original religion. One cannot claim Christianity was a religion of Adam. No way. Can one cannot claim Judaism or Buddhism or any other the isms, but we can claim, maybe you don't accept it, that's another issue, but we can claim that Islam was the religion of Adam and Eve. That was the religion which God revealed to them. They were commanded to submit to the will of God. And that is what Islam means. So when, when the first man, Adam, he disobeyed and he ate from this tree, was this tree, was it beautified for him that he was lured into this? And then at, when he did this, was he forgiven afterwards? Well, the reality as it is recorded in the Quran is that after Adam and Eve ate and they sought forgiveness from God because of course for God to have put them in a situation like that yeah. knowing full well that they were going to eat God knew ahead of time they were going to eat so for him not to have given them a route and a way to remove the sin from themselves would have been unfair unjust unjust so he gave them that knowledge, mm -hmm. how to repent if you sin. So when they realized that they had sinned, they repented. And so the sin was removed from them. That's why the process of repentance is in the hands of each and every individual. It's not a special priest cast class that they're the ones who do forgiveness. You have to go and sit in a booth and make confess your sins and then they the priest comes out and says, your sins are forgiven. That's not the way. You know, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. How your sins are forgiven when some of these priests are committing more sins than the people who are confessing their sins? Yeah. You know, there's a human being. So forgiveness belongs only to God. That's the essence of religion. And that God will accept that forgiveness from whomsoever turns to him sincerely with a repentant heart, God will forgive them. No matter how great the sin is. He's the most merciful, the most loving. All we got to do is turn to him alone. Exactly. Simple. It's logical. Simple. Rational. And that's the way the religion of God should be. It should be a simple, rational, logical religion. It shouldn't have, you know, as you said, mental gymnastics as a pillar for you to be a follower. You've got to be a mental gymnast. You know, how to make three, one. 
and one three. No, we just deal with one. One. That's it. A few more points bef before we come to an end. So much to talk about, so little time. Tell us now, is the same concept that happened with Adam, I'm interested to know, is that what was beautified or however he went off and slipped today, many of the things that we're supposed to stay away from, the fornication, the adultery, the alcohol and the drugs, it seems like that is just beautified today. Well, so exactly. That the trick of the, the, That's the one devil? of the methodologies of Satan and the Quran addresses that specifically is saying that you know Satan and actually even Satan makes that open statement recorded in the Quran yeah. that I will beautify for them ah you know so that's what I'm that's yeah the, I will beautify for them corruption, corruption so that they would accept it and that's exactly what he did with the tree he came to Adam and he told them that this tree is the tree of life of eternal life it's made it beautiful. I mean, before that, Adam wasn't thinking about eternal life, you know, <laughs> short life, etc. Eternal life. Yeah, I need some of that. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. Who doesn't want to be eternal? I, I need a piece of that. Yeah. So what he made it seem is that of all the trees in, 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 the, uh, in the whole of the garden, this is the one tree he had to eat from. Yeah. And that's is not exactly what's happening. Now we're doing the, the media makes... The corruption seem like these things, our life is incomplete. If we have not experienced and tasted this thing, our life is, well, you know, life is just not fulfilled unless we get to this thing. And these things that we are chasing after, which have been beautified for us, are corruption. Things which are harmful to us as individuals, harm to our societies without a shadow of a doubt. Has the truth always from the beginning been opposed? Because you'll see a stigma attached to this truth, what we claim is from the creator of the heavens and the earth. Has it always been the way during Moses' time, Jesus' time, all the prophets? Has there been an opposing force, force to try to lure people away from the correct way? Absolutely. It began with Adam and Satan and will not end until the end of this world and all that is living in it dies and is resurrected. The satanic forces will always be there throughout this life. As long as this world is functioning, it will be there. It has been from the very beginning. It will remain there till the end. And this is a part of the challenge and the test. Will we submit our wills to God? Or will we submit our wills to Satan and his forces? Plays on our desires, plays on our... Uh, our needs, mm -hmm. you know, turns them into things which are alluring to us, mm -hmm. but in fact harmful to us. So this process is a never-ending process. We just have to be conscious of it. We have to open up and, and wake up to know what's really happening.